Hello, hello. Okay, hi everyone. It is two o'clock my time on Monday during what is for my university the third to last week of the semester. Um, and I, so let me introduce myself as, as I'm coming on live here. So um, if you can hear me, if you tuned in and you can hear me, please go ahead and give me a little hello in the comments so I know that my mic is working. I'm a little concerned that like my headphones are not working. Okay. You're not seeing you. You're not seeing me. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> Hi, Anna. I'm glad that you joined. Hi, Jennifer. Yes, it's the last week of your classes. Okay. So Jennifer, are you seeing me? Because Anna's not. So I just want to see if that's me or what's going on. Hi, Kelly. Yay. Hi, Sarah. Kelly can hear me. Can you see me? Hello, hello, everybody. I'm so excited. Shital, I'm so glad that you're here. And great. Okay, so if you can't see me, but you can hear me, go ahead and refresh. That's what I would do. Okay, cool, because other people can hear me, Anna. So there you go. So I am Kathy Mazak, and let me tell you a little tiny bit about myself, and then I'm going to jump into the content for today, which is like a little bit of a I don't want to call it tough love. I just want to call it love, love message that you might need to hear at this particular moment in your academic semester. So, okay, great. Yes. Good, Anna. Awesome. So I run a group, which you might be a member of, called I Should Be Writing on Facebook. So if you are not a member, then you can go ahead and just go to facebook.com where you are right now, right, watching me, and go to slash groups slash I should be writing all smushed together. Or you can search, use the search function, search for I should be writing, it'll come right up. So you can join that group and it is for academic women and I define that as any person who identifies as a woman and who also either is a professor, a researcher, um, studying a PhD, has a PhD, um, even we have some master's students in there who are defending their theses and stuff, but really it's the idea is to get um, women together to talk about their writing and to deal with this, I should be writing feeling that we all kind of have all the time, right? That just because we are um, physically able maybe to write at any moment that we should be doing it, right? Um, and that is absolutely not true. Thank you for dropping that link. Yay, there's the link. So, um, in that group, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I post um, like a little engagement post. And Monday's posts are Monday Mindset. So today I went in and I was just looking about how everybody's Monday writing mindset is doing and realized that we needed to have a little talk. <laughs> so I want to address some of the things that came up. And the reason that I want to address them is because they are things that come up for everybody. So the first thing is that if you are in a university situation right now and you're on a semester system, it is very likely that you are at the end of what we call even here when spring doesn't really, it doesn't make sense because I live in the tropics. And so um, what we have is rainy and dry and, and fall and spring don't like line up with what we, <laughs> what we have here in Puerto Rico. Um, but we, we are, if you're on the semester system, you are on the, you're at the end of the spring semester. So the last week, second to last week, we're on the third to last week. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, what that feels like to see if you relate. You can tell me if you relate. So um, I'm Kathy Mazak. I um, am a tenured full professor and mom of three uh, at the University of Puerto Rico in Mayaguez. And I also, as I said, run this. Facebook group called I Should Be Writing, and I'm an academic women's writing coach. So I create programs and I blog about academic writing um, and how we can do it in a more, in a way that feels better and not that, and actually the I Should Be Writing thing is tongue in cheek in terms of it being like the name of my group because I don't think you should be writing all the time. Okay, <laughs> so let's just get that all the way, first of all. Um, hi, Roxanne. Nice to see you. Yay. Okay, so 
anyway, what I was talking about was the Monday mindset post. So everybody um, or many people are feeling right now overwhelmed by their semester. So I'll give you a little story about how my last week has gone. So in Puerto Rico, we have always our spring break it moves every year because it's always the Catholic Holy Week. So it's the week between the Catholic celebration of Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday that we have as our spring break. And this kids get off school at that same time. So it all lines up and it's all fine, except that, you know, I don't know all the rules about how they figure out what Holy Week is, but it was really late this year. Too late. Too late to be the kind of break that you needed, you know? So everybody kind of was burnt out by the time we got to the spring break week. And what happened to me was <laughs> that I was so like just pushing it and didn't, not knowing it. And this might happen to you too. Like when you kind of like are just going on maybe adrenaline and then once you get an actual break, your body just shuts down. So you get a cold or whatever happens. Well, what happened to me was that I like legit put my back out. Reaching for a low piece of bread from a shelf in the supermarket, reaching down to get a loaf of bread from a low shelf. I did a move and my low back felt like it just freezed up like in a line across my low back. And so I managed to get home, which was amazing, and check out, put the groceries in the car, get home. And then I laid in bed for literally three days and took... um old pain medicine. <laughs> this is a sad story I'm telling on Facebook Live. Um, I took some old back, some Flexeril that I found that had been expired. Um, and, and that's how I got through those three days. And thankfully, my mother was here and took care of the kids and ran the house and made sure everybody ate while I was not leaving bed. So um, that was like the first three days, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of my spring break week. And then I finally could walk. Yay. Yes, Jen. Definitely. Oh, no. <laughs> so and then I could walk. And then what happened? I got the cold. I got the spring cold, the ridiculous spring cold that people get. That's like the horrible post-nasal drip and all the ridiculousness. So I was like back to bed for two weeks and NyQuil and DayQuil and all the things. So and I like totally lost my voice. Like, I couldn't do a Facebook Live, which I had planned for Thursday or Friday of last week. Let me have some water. Hi, Olga. Yay. But here I am. And so the lesson is, or the idea that I'm expressing to you is, we are in the overwhelmed part of the semester. So one thing I want to tell you is that I want you to think for a second about how every semester goes. And so think about how long your semesters are. Ours are 15 weeks. So around week seven, you start to feel a little bit of like, hmm, I'm behind. Things aren't going to go quite the way that I want. Hi, Kelly. Thank you. I am feeling a lot better, so that's good. Um, and then you get to maybe week 10, and things are starting to really get like tightened up and like not great right? And then when you're in week 12, 13, 14, you're just like, I call it like hanging on by your fingernails, right? You're just not, things aren't flowing. You're not feeling happy and full of ease, which is what we're trying to do, but that's not what's happening usually in the last three or four weeks of the semester. Um, every break, either the kids got sick or I got sick for the last four years and you have twins. Oh yeah, girl, that is <laughs> not... But that's like what happens, like everybody kind of shuts down, right? Like, oh, I have, now I don't have to be running. And instead of like, it's almost like this physical forced rest that your body does. Okay, so just think about semester. This happens the same way every semester. So what I refer to this as is the, the, the semester ebbs and flows, okay, right? So there's like times when things are ramping up and times when things ramp down and times when they ramp up again. And I used to have in a presentation I used to do, I, I just like drew this ridiculous graph, right? <laughs> Which was like on the one axis was like stress levels and on the other was time and it just goes like, you know, like and, and kind of drops off when the semester ends. That wasn't a very scientific graph. I just made it up. But this is all to say that we, the semester ebbs and flows. And so how should you react around this time of the semester? What should you be thinking about 
as you are headed into week 12, 13, 14, or, you know, the last couple weeks or the final push of the semester. So I'm just going to address some of the things that people said in the Facebook group today. So one thing I want to do is give you permission not to write. And as a writing coach, you may think this odd, <laughs> but I think, and the way that I teach um, about writing, that the most important thing that you can do is create a positive relationship between you and your writing. So all other things like need to fall away to make that happen. And what I mean by that is like just getting writing done to do it shouldn't be your goal. It should always be setting yourself up to have a positive writing session, however long that is, and we could get into that. But just what I want to say is you want to set yourself up for positive, a positive relationship with you and your writing. So if you have a stack of 50 essays to grade or a bunch of exams or a grant to do that you're, you know, doing the horrible last <laughs> Bit on or you know whatever it's okay to kind of put your you know the their pipeline practices or the things that you're doing to keep your writing going it's okay to put them aside and deal with these next three weeks and I wanted to say to Trisha she posted in the group that she like some other stuff was going on with her that made her feel anxiety and that that anxiety was kind of taking up her brain space. Um, and so it was hard to write because of that. And so what I told her is that you should let yourself forgive yourself or just give yourself permission to not write for a little while <laughs> until those anxiety producing things either like the volume goes down on them you know because obviously especially with anxiety like if it's you know happens to you a lot then it's not something that you can just like say like oh no I don't feel anxiety anymore lucky me but um, but instead like you know whatever those things that are causing anxiety when they get turned down a little then we can jump back into the writing and she said but I developed these habits and I don't want to break the habits. And I love the idea of writing as a habit. What I would say to that is you created the habit, you can recreate it. Okay, so you can remember what it was like to have the habit. And you can remember what it was like to do it. Oh, hi, Trisha. <laughs> yes, and, you, and so you can then get, it's like if you got, if you moved the wagon <laughs> and then you fell off, you can get back on the wagon and move it again. Like you are capable of doing that. And so I think a lot of the time um, we get messages and sometimes they're from other writing coaches and sometimes they're just the overachiever telling us this, right? We get these messages that are like, you have to write every day. You have to produce a certain number of words. You have to get a certain number of publications out a year. And yes, like we don't want to not write and articles don't magically appear unless we write words on the page. Like absolutely. So I'm not saying that we should just go skipping through the flowers. That's not what I mean. What I mean is that at times in your life when things are rough, <laughs> it's okay to shelf the writing practice for a little while, knowing that you'll get back to it. And what I um, tell people to do is like, maybe you wanna put a date on that. Like maybe you wanna say like, I'm going to think about this, you know, I'm gonna give myself the, till the end of the semester and then I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, come back in and I'll schedule, schedule into your calendar, uh, you know, that when you're gonna get back in to your writing practice. And what that first session back in could look like is just a planning session. It's just an open the document. You know, if you have something that you know you need to work on, it could be just open the document and read it. That's it. Or it could be uh, more of a like kind of strategic planning session where you map out what projects you want to work on in the next few months or something like that. It doesn't have to be like, I'm writing zero words for three weeks and then I'll write a thousand words when I jump back in. Like, no, be gentle, create positive experiences and think about 
how you can set yourself up for success. So Trisha, thank you for that because there's other people, if you said it, there's other people who are thinking it too. Um, and then the other, another person I went to talk to was Ana Maria. Oh, I just called you that in Spanish. Ana Marie, I don't know if you're a Spanish name or not, but I wrote you down on my notes. It's Ana Marie, who I know you're here or you were at the top of this thing. One of my daughter's best friend is named Ana Maria, so that's why I said that. Okay, so Ana Marie said she is having, that one of the things holding her back from writing is balancing competing priorities. And that, um, and so like a lot of us have caregiver priorities and they um, often jump up and get you at the times when you were hoping not to have to deal with them. But what can you do? If you're the caregiver, you're the one giving the care and there's really no way out of it. <laughs> so, um, so it's also okay during moments when you are trying to deal with an ill parent or a sick kid or some other thing that's going on in your life, a death in the family, like it could be so many different things. It's also okay to say, hey, writing, I know you. I'll get back to you later, you know? And again, use some of these strategies. Um, okay, thank you, Anna. I appreciate it. <laughs> it is lovely in Spanish. Um, so that, but one of the, the words that she said in her post was like balancing competing priorities. And so what I wanted to say was I want to talk about balance. And sometimes I even find myself using the word balance. Um, and there's kind of like a pop, uh, popular culture or popular media um, use of the word balance, especially when it comes to like working women and balancing family and home. So I just, I don't know where I picked this up, so I'm sorry I can't cite the source. But like I would just like to replace the word balance with manage um, because you can't, it's never balanced. Like you never, because it's not, <laughs> because when the person you're taking care of gets sick, the balance, there's no balance there. It's you go to the hospital or you go to the doctor or you get the medicines or whatever or you spent, you do the all night vigil or whatever you're doing, right? There's no balance there. It's management. Okay. So it's all about like, okay, how do I manage this situation? And the way you manage like a you know, a, a sudden caregiver, you know, time suck for lack of a better word, right? Where suddenly you have to like, you're like, oh, you know, my daughter got, has a fever. She can't go to daycare. And now what can, you know, what can I do? Well, I need to manage that. And so what happens is like all the things I got planned, <laughs> like I need to unplan them and figure out how I'm going to get things done at, on a different pace. How am I going to manage doing things in a, in a less, you know, all the things I was supposed to do this week aren't happening this week. So they're going to have to happen and other things are going to have to get pushed out. And it's really like, um, it's really managing that rather than balancing because I don't like, I think that the image of like kind of balancing plates, right. Or like balance or that things have to be 50, 50 balanced is just not, that's not how it works all the moms out there and the moms of twins who are commenting here, right? <laughs> like, like, there's no like, it's 50% home and 50% work and 0% me and whatever. <laughs> like, it doesn't work that way. Um, there's always like stuff that comes up at home that's bigger and then other stuff at work that's bigger. And you're always kind of either like negotiating or managing that. Yes. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. And I th I'm glad that that works. Jennifer says, the ebb and flow is so true. I hadn't anticipated the ebb associated with reviewing two student theses in the same month. Yes. Um, I got none of my own stuff accomplished during that time. Now that all that is past normal class stuff is so much less stress. Getting back into planning and doing mode this week. It has been great. That's fantastic. Excuse me for blowing my nose in front of all of you. Hello, Adriana. It is more like triage. So <laughs> it, yeah. So it's like you, you, some, you don't get to plan <laughs> when the, when things like illness or other people's illness of people that you take care of or a partner's sudden loss of a job or like lots of things that can happen or like, let's not even think of sad things. Let's think of happy things that could also like really pull your focus from work. Like for example, your sister's getting married somewhere and you're in the wedding or the, um, 
or the um, the um, or the or the I'm sorry I just got the, the daughter walked in the room and I just lost my concentration completely oh I was thinking when I built this house so we built our house and that was like a huge major project that really like I needed to balance, not balance, manage a lot of things, and it was taking up, you know, a lot of time. So that is just, you know, part of it. You have to figure out how things are going to go. And sometimes it's like, and some, I talk about it like pedals, like the, the gas pedal. Like you can't floor the gas pedal on all your vehicles at once. <laughs> like if this is not, the metaphor is falling apart, but you get what I mean. Like you can't, like at home, you can't be pedal to the floor. And at work, you can't be pedal to the floor. Um, like you just, it's not, there's not enough energy, right? So you have to figure out how are you going to like speed up and pull back on different aspects of things that you're managing at different times. And it's not just work and home, but also like um, Jennifer was saying, like, okay, you have theses, you're graduating students. That's another thing that's happening right now. You know, people are defending and like my husband's reading like theses of his students that are graduating right now. And that just, it takes a lot of time. And so his own writing is probably not going to get done while he's graduating three master's students in the next couple of weeks. It's just not. And that's okay. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I have been ranting for a little bit too long, perhaps, but I'm glad that you joined. Let me see. So the, just, to re, just to recap, um, the semester ebbs and flows, and we should acknowledge it. We should no longer be surprised by it, um, and we should forgive ourselves for trying to, you know, um, forgive ourselves for not maintaining like our writing practice equally the same every week of the semester. Ideally, that would be fantastic, but realistically, it's not. Yay, Kristen, I'm glad. Yes. <laughs> um, also, to recap, it's okay not to write. Oh, Jennifer, forgiveness all the way. Gentleness. We want you to be gentle with yourself. We want to, you to forgive yourself for not doing the things that you really wanted with your best, you know, overachiever, I'm amazing, you know, priority driven woman self, you know, wanted to do, well, it's okay that you didn't do them perfectly all the time. It's so, so, um, okay. <laughs> I'm giving, Kathy says it's okay. So this is everybody's permission to back off the writing because guess what's coming next? And this is the next thing I wanted to say. Yes, you have all the permission to be kind <laughs> to yourself and everybody around you, um, especially yourself, please. Um, so what I wanted to say um, as a kind of next steps or things to think about doing, um, this Wednesday, if you haven't signed up for my webinar, that's when I'm like going to be teaching um, those of you who have heard the term Tiger Time before from me. Um, that's what I'm teaching on Wednesday's free webinar. And if you're in the I Should Be Writing group, it's not hard to find the post that's about signing up for that webinar. A week from today, um, if you're watching me live on my Facebook page, you will see in the header um, that, uh, not a week from today, a week from Wednesday, I'm going to do another free webinar. And that is, it's a new one that I'm excited to put together. And it's going to be about planning your summer writing. So one of the things that a lot of people think about at this point in the semester, and I think you should, is it's okay because in three or four weeks, the summer is starting. And I think that a lot of us have like grandiose plans for the gazillions of things that we're going to get done this summer that didn't get done during the year. And so what I want to do is have a lovely webinar about making realistic plans that include rest, but that will move the needle significantly on the projects that you want to focus on this summer. Um, so if you plan to take the whole summer off and not think about academia, do not sign up for the workshop and good for you. Do that. Um, but for those of you who are thinking, I have this writing project I want to do this summer, or I have these things I want to get done, um, that I'm looking forward to not having teaching responsibilities or just like the, the, you know, the different feel that the summer has for, um, and again, I say summer if you're in. In the southern hemisphere, I mean winter. Um, but 
the break that often happens if you're on a semester system, the big break. Um, if you have grandiose plans for that, I want to, we're going to go through them. I'm going to talk about how to set goals for this, for your summer writing, um, how to make sure that you plan your summer so that you do get rest and refreshed and that you're back in the year, like really excited. So April, that one is Wednesday, May 1st. So you'll see it here and I can drop the link in the comments when I come back and Facebook should give you a notification that says, you know, there was a comment on something that you followed. But also if you're actually on my Facebook page, the like the banner at the head um, of this page has, um, has the sign up information in it. And there's ads going out for that. So that'll be, you might see it in your feed. Um, so anyway, I do encourage you to sign up. Those two free workshops, one on Wednesday, one on the on next Wednesday. Um, and if you're on my email list, you will definitely hear about that. And if you're in the I Should Be Writing group, it's going to be all over there too. So you won't miss it. So I am very excited to talk to all of you. I'm wishing you all the joy and love in the end of the semester. You can do it. I hope your back doesn't go out like mine did. And I'm going to be taking very good care of myself in the next few weeks so that I can stay upright and do all the grading. So um, thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.